Welcome, everybody. My name is Mr. Reality from Reality Forecast. I'm joined by psychic medium Liz Cross, and it's the 4th of July weekend this week and celebration in America. I thought we would bring in the founding fathers and ask them, what do they think? Ooh, okay. What would you like to know? All right, we've got a couple guys here. John Adams, Alexander Hamilton. Everyone knows him. He's got his own musical now. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Ben Franklin, John Jay, James Madison, John Hancock, a whole lot of guys. Uh, do they come through to you as their characters that we see them in movies? And They're very short. Yeah, people were shorter back then. And George Washington, too. He's not on this list. He didn't sign it. He was away in a battle, but I'd like to ask him, too. Well, Benjamin Franklin is the most prominent one stepping forward. Okay. I feel like Hello. He is- very Mr. vocal Frank. very yeah sorry have you had any good read any good books lately mr franklin he's laughing he goes i don't read them i write them what about have you had any incarnation since ben franklin one only one interesting how many lifetimes have you had as a human being mr franklin all together how many lifetimes uh average 500 it's very unlikely to have only been incarnated once in like 200 years what have you been doing what are, what were you doing in the lifetime after oh okay so he came in as a female um in his following lifetime following ben franklin and he swapped roles with his wife. So he was the female. She was the male. She was a businessman. Um, they owned a company and life was hard. He being she in that lifetime, uh, he looked after the children and they're very into politics. Even in that lifetime, they schmoozed a lot of politicians to get things to go their way Uh, he says anybody can be bought and sold nowadays is exactly what he just told me is he speaking about anybody specifically (laughs) (laughs) right are you speaking about any he says all of them a whole lot of them total disgrace they can all be bought what does he think about the state of the united states of america versus the time he was born in what are his opinions? And um, what are your opinions now? Shambles. He says it's shambles. And I'm saying, why do you say that? Well, first of all, he's saying it's too populated. There's too many people to control. That's very, very different to when he was around. People were sparse. People were ethical. For the most part, they were religious. They had morals. They had values. Now, this is his own personal thoughts, feelings, and opinions. Crime was low. And if there was a crime, if there was a crime, he says, you know, it was really, really bad. He says, now people just commit crimes and nobody cares. And he's talking about things like, you know, shoplifting and, and, um, yeah, he, he's talking about even what we consider to be minor crimes today. Those were huge crimes back then. Uh, does he have any hopes and visions for the next 25 years of America? Moving out to 2050? Yeah, hopes and visions for the next 25 years of America. It's certainly losing, he says, what he what he's saying to me. What are you saying? Put it another way. Okay. Uh, it's going to the dogs. It All will right, be then. completely unrecognizable. It will be a new version of itself is what he's saying that is so far removed from even the 1970s, 1980s. It's, it's, 
And I'm saying, he's saying it's going to be like everywhere else. Let's bring in John Adams, who's the great, 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 great grandfather of a friend of mine. Uh, John Adams, I wonder if he could tell us about what he thinks of America currently. Ooh, what do you currently think of the USA? He says it's on its his its knees, is what he says. And to, to whom? On its knees to whom? As in the, the country, he says, is crippling. Now, in his personal thoughts, feelings, and opinions, he's telling me that's okay. Because out of lots of turmoil, being forced down to the bottom, the only way is up. And he thinks that we have the opportunity in the USA to build a better version of itself. But see, even now, Franklin's standing next to him going, no, no, no. You're always so hopeful, John Adams. You always look at everything through rose-tinted glasses. That is not going to be the case. And I'm saying, was that how he was? Yes, that's how he was on uh, in that lifetime. He was an idiot, you know, ideologue. He he believed in ideology. Um, and I'm saying, but because I just heard the word communist thrown in there. So what, why would you say you think John Adams is a communist? Yes. So now they're having a, an argument. Franklin thinks that Adams is a communist. <laughs> I don't know why we invited Ben Franklin to this party. Come on. Stop beating up the old people. Stop beating up all the presidents. He's just jealous he wasn't a president, I think. He really would like to step forth and say, how about Robert R. Livingston, who I always associate with being a great writer, but another signer of the Independence Declaration, not also, also not well-known. Is he in the mix Yes, he's just stepped forward now. Those two are no. still arguing. I'm asking them to take it outside. It's always fun when spirits argue in your room. Um, what would you like to know? So I'd like to know what his thoughts are on the current political climate in America. What if you can your... call it a climate. <laughs> right. What are your current Global thoughts? warming, politician, global warming. Uh, what do you what think you... about it? What do you think about it's definitely changing. And he agrees it will be unrecognizable. Will we still be like um, into the Republic? He doesn't believe so. Are we going to have a civil war? Now he's saying yes. What's he think about the evolution of the two party system that we currently have? I mean, I think it would be better if we had more parties representing more views. What do you think about the two-party system that we have? Disasters. Not an honest bone in either party. Everybody's out for their own political gain. It doesn't actually matter which side of the aisle you're on. It's all corrupt, he says. I'm saying, okay, I want to go back to this Civil War thing. Why are you saying in your own personal thoughts, feelings, and opinions that there's going to be a civil war? It's coming. Is it coming soon? In his, you know, in his mind, yes. By 2050 <laughs> or not by 2050? 2050? No. Before the turn of the century, there will be a civil war. Will we then have two separate countries? We may even have three. We have three now. There's Canada, there's Mexico, there's North America, there's America. There's a whole bunch of countries out there. I can't list them all. There are so many. But what does he think will be the final straw that starts that schism or that war? The place will burn down. He's showing me what will... But it's not going to be like Canada and Mexico. This is U.S. Is this strictly between the U.S.? Is somebody going to come in and, and split the United States? No. The United States will split itself. Is it going to be South versus North, North again? Or North versus South? No. 
East it's versus West. East West. <laughs> there you go. It's East West. Well, that will be a. F I don't think I'll be around for that one, but it'll be an interesting eventuality. Um, so, well, hold on. Let's, I, you know they're going to be dying out and crying out for more, you know, in the comments. Why what's the catalyst in it? those? What's the battle and what's it about? How long does it last? How long does it last? How long will the Civil War last? A long time, five years, ten years, between five and ten years. And what is the catalyst? Okay. The catalyst is too much governmental control. People will want their freedom and their lives back. And which is going to go where? Are, you know, what, which side's going to be? So are they going to break away red and blue? It may not even be red and blue at this point. He's saying that there was it a new part. A new party will emerge that's like the Democratic People's Party or something like that, sort of a middle of the Sounds road party. CCP and communistic, but all right. But but it's but it's it's a breakaway from traditional right and left, and they're the they're the ones that are going to lead this going forward. Of you know, we want our sovereignty back. You know, they they don't want the federal government basically ruling the states. So are you saying to me that eventually we're going to have this, you know, system in place where the federal government is more powerful than the state? And yes, he says yes. And that's exactly what they're gunning for. They don't like the fact that the states have individual rights. They don't believe that the states are making good decisions. They believe that the states over time are making decisions against the federal government. Therefore, he's saying to me that the uh, there will be some sort of division. All right. I wonder if we could bring forth Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. I know you had some shortcomings, especially with Sally Hemings and being a have some problems there and I don't want to make bad light of that but you did you were a troubled man and uh what do you believe that the current problem is the United States of America what's the main pressing problem here that we face today in 2024 to my so in his personal thoughts feelings and opinions too much division. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody wants to be right. Nobody wants to have a discussion. Nobody wants to have a debate and think about things logically and come to some sort of compromise. Nobody wants to compromise. Yeah, it feels like there's no discourse anymore. It's just, I hate you, I hate you kind of a thing. Um, how did you reconcile your advocacy for liberty with the ownership of slaves? How would you reconcile your advocacy for slaves? It was an acceptable thing back then. He's saying everybody had one or a few, and they were necessary. It, and he's saying it was it was necessary to he wholeheartedly regrets it because he will have to that's karmic debt that has been created and he will have to repay replay replay repay that in his lifetimes he's telling me the universe will punish all of the slave owners they have done and they will continue to do so was he in love with sally were you in love with Sally? No. Does he have past lives with her? Give you this. Let me give you this. I don't think he was capable of loving anyone. To be honest with you, there's something wrong with this man. Maybe something in a past life or something in his youth? In a past life. 
sex life. Did you know? Did you know that? Did you and Sally have past life? Oh, she's been his wife in many lifetimes. But they wanted to try the forbidden love thing. But were you in love with her? No. How many past lives or has Thomas Jefferson had as a human being? Seven hundred. You'd think you'd know better. It, you know, there's a problem with him. And I'm picking this up so strongly. He is very, very stubborn, very rigid, very slow on a soul level to learn. Things don't come very easily to him. He goes through these lifetimes at a snail's pace, whereas a lot of people are trying to fast track the ascension process, not him. He is going through that. He's like, I'm taking my time. It doesn't matter if it takes me two, three, four thousand life human lifetimes. I, I don't care. And I'm saying, why? Why are you moving so slow? Any and methodical? Why are you doing that? He's not a risk taker. And I'm saying, but you tell me you're not a risk taker. Surely to God, uh, having an affair or a relationship with uh, your slave that's a big risk. It was a huge risk. It was a huge risk. And I'm saying, but then how can you say you're not a risk taker? Because he doesn't learn from those life lessons. He's telling me he, he's very slow on the uptake. And what are some of the issues that he feels that he needs to work on moving forward? What are some of the issues that he feels that you feel you need to work on moving forward. Uh, treating everyone with respect and equal equality and the ability to actually love. So he's got major problems within his soul with this inability to love anyone else. He doesn't even know how to love himself. Well, he could have left our CTT group this morning. We talked about that and we talked about how to love yourself and be a lot more forgiving. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, thank you very much. What does he see as the future for, does he see a war coming, Thomas Jefferson? Do you see a war coming? Absolutely. We will break apart. And when we break apart, that third party that becomes more and more popular and more people choose that as a, the more people choose that. No. So you're going to have like the diehard democratic party. What about the Republican party? Is that going to be still very prominent? No, it's fading out. The Republican party is fading out. Um, but here's this rise of this new political party that will want to split. Now in saying that, when it does split east-west, is that going to be right down the middle? No. Is that going to be uh, sort of, you know, in a Y-shaped? Yes, it's going to be more in a Y-shaped. And I'm saying, well, what will happen to the south? Will the south want to split? It does split. And what about the sort of the Midwest? Does that go to the le left to the west side or does that go the Midwest? Oh, the Midwest wants to kind of govern. So here's where everybody's going to want to govern themselves. So you're going to have the Midwest governing itself. It doesn't want to be any part of the South or anything like that. And it wants to have its own little place. And then what about the West, um, like California, Oregon, Washington, Texas goes this way. So it's going to be kind of like, I don't know how best to describe it. Almost like a square sort of Y, right? So, so you know, or I'll tell you what, you know when the NFL, they kick the ball and there's that thing, what is that called? The uprights for a field goal? Yeah. Race, really? Is that what it is? Wow. <laughs> Whatever. 
Yeah, that sort of, you know, that, the, yeah, that's what it's going to look like, right? So you're going to have the, you know, the south down here, and then you're going to have your Midwest. So where's the east, the northeast going to go? The northeast is going to be part of the west. So California, New York, and Oregon, Washington State, and then the New England states, they're going to be part of the west. What about Washington, D.C.? That's all going to join with the west. And then sort of the Midwest West is going to be its own division. And then, of course, you're going to have like, what, Texas? What about Oklahoma? Oklahoma's going Midwest. And what about Texas is going to the to the right, to the, the, the South? Is it going to be a real mess? Absolutely. Will it ever reunite? It will reunite. But this is something that we have to go through. All right. John Hancock, who colloquially is known for signify signature signature because it's a great big signature right at the top um you inherited a very large fortune from your uncle in your lifetime so how did that wealth and that growing up shape your political ambitions it made it easy okay he's telling me he's waving to everybody hello he says hello, hello. he's so excited he's very flamboyant he was gay in the lifetime of John Hancock, but he couldn't let anyone know about it. He was oh. hidden. Oh, in we the won't closet. tell anybody. He said, well, it doesn't matter now. But back then, it really did matter. Did Dorothy know? No. Oh. Did you ever have relationships with men? several <laughs> he's he's so funny he's like uh he used to have parties and soirees and he you know his wife Ooh. would just go to bed he he was a drinker he was definitely a drinker uh he would go to like secret underground sort of bars or drinking places and uh there were meeting points for gay and le would lesbian no no not lesbian just gay um gay men to to meet up like it was very secretive but he was there all the time and he would always say it was like political stuff where anybody oh it's political yes that's a I think they do the same thing nowadays so that's I wanted to ask him. Hold about. on, I have to ask. Hold on, wait. I got to ask this question. I'm so sorry. Were any of the other founding fathers in your secret club? Two of them, yeah. <laughs> All right. Drop sorry. any names? Can you drop any names? No, I'm sworn to secrecy. Shh. So there have been a lot of upheavals since you're, you were around, uh, you know, Civil War, World War One, World War Two. In his view, have the American people stayed true to the spirit of the revolution, or do you think that it's forgotten? It's totally forgotten. They don't teach that in schools, and they don't want to teach it in schools because knowledge is power. And they'll know that if you can turn on the government once, whether it be the U.S. government, whether it's the British government, the crown, they don't want you to have the knowledge that there is a possibility that you could turn on them again. They want everybody to be subservient. And what does he feel that, does he think that we're headed towards a war? Yeah, absolutely. The government, the federal government is going to sink their teeth in. OK, around 2050, there'll be no resemblance of freedom, democracy. They're going to know every transaction. They're going to know everything you do. They're going to dictate to you what you do, how you do it. They're going to completely like mind control. They're going to tell you what to think, how to think where to think it does he think that's a good idea absolutely not absolutely not 
What about the stock market? Is the stock market going to be around? Yes, but even that will be heavily controlled. Because even in the stock market, he's saying there is a lot of freedom within the stock market. You can buy and sell and you can make choices and, you know, you're a consumer buying products. And even that will be heavily controlled. They will ruin some companies. They will, you know, if a company goes against the federal government, they will then distort the news and put out, you know, dominate the news that, you know, this company is this or this company is that, where they will then be in the business of destroying companies. All right. Do you, do you guys hang out? Like, have you met with Ben Franklin or Thomas Jefferson or John Adams in a while? Or They do. Are you all going to reincarnate in another lifetime together? No, that was kind of a one-off thing. Okay. Are you incarnated now? Are you incarnated now? No. How many lifetimes has John Hancock had? How many human lifetimes have you had? About 400. And did you reincarnate since John Hancock? Yes. Came back as female, but a lesbian. And the <laughs> came back. And was that also like, were you allowed to? No, no, you weren't allowed. But he did or she did. And I'm saying, OK. And so what what was the lesson there? They did you live with her? Eventually. Eventually, she did live with her lesbian lover wife, and but they had to move away and start a new life. He moved away, yeah, and start a new life, and then what? And they had to pretend they were like widowed sisters. All right. For our close, I'd like to bring in the first president of the United States, George Washington, Mr. President. Ah, uh, here he is. He's stepping forward. How do you do, sir? Very well, thank you. What was he doing before we called him today? What was he working on? He was waiting in line. He knew you were going to call him. Oh, I didn't well. know. I didn't what know. What was he doing before, though? Like, before today we started? Uh, what were you doing before? Polishing his apples. <laughs> Does he ever talk to his other incarnations? Like, can he engage with them? Like, we're engaging with him now. Can you ever talk to your other incarnations? There's no need to do that. You are all of those and in one embodiment, in one energy. And how many incarnations of human person is he? About 600. What level on the evolutionary stair step? is George Washington. Ooh, he's at a level four. Has he come back since? Yes, twice. Only twice, it's a long time. What's he think about America as it stands now? And is he currently spinning in his grave? Oh, God. Um, he thought that was funny, by the way. Uh, are you currently spinning in your grave? No. Does anyone spin in their graves? No. Um, only if there's an earthquake. <laughs> He's funny. He's really got a good sense of humor. Um, so what do you think about the current state of the USA? Uh, we're losing control. The people what the who's losing control the government everybody's losing control everybody wants to control each other so the people want to control the government the government want to control the people and who's winning the government why because they have absolute power over the people and i'm saying but what but what about the people i mean they like to just be laissez-faire they like to just do business and and live their lives that's not going to happen so much anymore. Is it going to be 
done through uh, environmental sort of under the guise of environmental laws. That's part of it, the task force. What about the IRS? Are the IRS going to get bigger and bigger? Yes, the IRS is going to take on more roles of control and power, and it's going to get bigger. And will it just be uh, with regards to finances? No. So a lot of the environmental things are going to be put into the IRS as well. So um, you will have to pay tax if you're not recycling. You have to prove that you are recycling. Uh, and what else are you saying to me here? What uh, what other things? Uh, water pollution, your co- how much you consume. And I'm saying, but we pay for I- electricity and water individually yes but you're only going to be ha- you're only going to have like allocated amounts and then if you use more which the water companies and and electricity companies will allow you to do oh we have uh, that here in texas you'll get taxed on that what oh you're fine yes we're in a drought right now and so you're only allowed to water at certain times of the day and if they recognize that you're using more water than you'll get a fine in the mail. What's the fine? How much? I don't know. Not great. I haven't done it. So I just let everything die outside. So do you feel that when did things go awry, Mr. President? When did the government stop being for the people and of the people and start being for themselves? We've lost our connection to the president. Mr. President, Mr. President, 